High five! Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the DCWF's Saturday Showdown. I am the DCWF's World Heavyweight Champion, the Celtic Dragon Mythal Boysack. How is everyone doing today? Applause is good. Applause is good. Good to see some life in this crowd here. Indeed, it is. It's good to see life in any crowd. So when we we have got such a packed, a packed show for you today. So when we get on to the first match, we will be around for ages if we don't. Yep, the first match is set for one fall, and it is an SLCW Women's Championship match. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, weighing in at 142 pounds, fighting at I think he meant to say... Coming out of Detroit, Michigan, this is the showgirl, Kendra. I would have done if my microphone hadn't had a minor error, yes. It's all right, it happens. Kendra, not getting much love on her way to the ring here. Indeed not. Is it just me or did a chandelier just fall? Oh, that is yeah, a strip of pole. Strip of pole. Don't get that in your army. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing her opponent. She weighs in at 175 pounds. She fights out of the highlands of Ethiopia. She is the DCWF. 
SLCW Women's Champion Whiskers Savage. I didn't know it. Ethiopia had islands. <laughs> Quite a bit of love for Whiskers Savage here, our DCW, our SLCW Women's Champion here. A living legend of her own right, that's for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, one full match. Your referee, Dick Witham. Now, indeed, the highlands of Ethiopia are actually in the northeast part of Africa, known as the Horn region. Place of a few battles. How many immortals come out of there? No, that's Scotland. <laughs> Don't often see many dicks in the ring, do you? I'm not yeah, touching that because that, <laughs> that's rife for right. innuendo. <laughs> he looks a little short and stubby too. <laughs> Looks like a college undergraduate. Uh, Whisker Savage, the taller, heavier, and stronger of the two, putting in a hammerlock behind Kendra's back and taking her over, arm dragging her down into an, uh, st bleh, the start of an armbar. Well, showing her who the more experienced one is, too. Don't forget that. Well, you're not going to end a match that quickly with an armbar. I mean, well, you've got to be lucky or you've got to be facing a member of the Spirit Squad to end a match that quickly with an armbar. And it just shows us Kendra pulls Whiskers up and I rakes her, take blinding her vision for a moment while taking out her legs with a leg sweep, ducking down the ground, sweeping the back of her knees up, following it up with a fist drop and then a pin. We've got a pin. We've got a one. We've got a two. No, we've got a one. Just a one. I've seen some MMA fighters too. Typically to an arm bar, but yeah, in pro wrestling, it's more of a wear down tactic. Two different styles. And as Kendra sends Whisker Savage into the corner, impacting on the turnbuckles, Kendra running in, delivering a headbutt to the stomach of Whisker Savage, and then I'm not even going to call that because I think I'll get sued for sexual harassment. No matter what I say, and take it to a back room. I, whatever I say will be really inappropriate, so I'm not going to say it, even if I don't mean it to be inappropriate. It's going to sound inappropriate. Legitimate wrestling move, seen by the one, two, three kid, a la X Park. There you go. That can't be inappropriate. Well, Whiskers apparently said that wasn't well worth the twenty-five dollars. 
Now this Whiskers Savage picks up Kendra and throws her back into the opposite corner. It comes running in and drop kicks her into a sitting position. Now Wesker's doing her own variation of a lap dance. <laughs> Dancing on top of her, literally. And now uh, Whiskers pulling Kendra back into the center of the ring and it Oh, going to, yeah, putting the elbow into the knee and driving it down into the mat. He's definitely working on, at least for the moment, the leg of Kendra. Yep, here we go again with more wear down tactics. <laughs> you get a one, a two, a, no, two, just a two. Well, it's still early in the match. I'm surprised the count got that high. Well, it's possible. If you know you can kick out, you might as well take the extra second to rest. Whisker Savage living a high knee to uh, Kendra. Knocking her back down onto the mat. I'm sure I was feeling that one. Look, she's going back. Uh, n not often use wrestling move the Boston Crab or Stronghold, if you prefer. Just bending the back and legs of Kendra back onto themselves really gets the lower back, the upper back, and the knees in that position. Yep, a few more moves like this. I don't think Kendra's going to have much energy left in her. Well, I mean, you can fight with a broken arm, right? You could probably fight with two broken arms, but if you've got problems with your legs, you're not going anywhere. Well, not to mention, I've been in that Boston Crab before. It wears you down. Oh, yeah. oh as Kendra manages to spin out of it, at least, she manages to just twist her body enough to throw Whiskers Savage off uh, and out of that Boston Crab maneuver. Some good athleticism in the way she got out of it there. Oh yeah, but it wrecks your back trying to do something like that. I mean, you're trying to twist fast enough to throw someone off you. It's not a really nice way to get out of something. Oh, I hear you. That's when you want a chiropractor backstage. Yeah, we have a wellness policy at the DCWF, which is, well, it's our policy that it's your fault. Oh, Kendra comes off the ropes and tries to get some sort of um, uh, bazooki kind of kick to uh, Whiskers Savage. Whiskers ducks that, but Kendra manages to come off the other end of the ropes, drop kicks Whiskers in the back, and delivers an elbow for good measure. Champ's starting to look a little bit in jeopardy here. And he sees a punch, a kick, soul butt. Kick, turn kick. And then a spinning, I don't know what that was, but my camera was out of position. But now we go for a pin. We got a one, a two, and a no. No, just a two. Well, Whiskers doesn't generally give up that easily. Yeah, well, as a side note, uh, Whiskers Savage uh, picked up the SLCW title at, uh, at our last PvP War Games, uh, where she, re she recently defended it against a, a, a large amount of women, uh, as in Corey Kruger. Oh, we got a pin roll up, we got a one. Two, just a two. Yeah, let's just say she de uh, defended against a a slew of former champions. There's a lesson uh, in experience right there. You always want to watch your back against a champ. Indeed.
Oh, that was a missed opportunity. It's Kendrick of running in, looking for the spear, trying to go Whiskers into the corner. Whiskers Savage manages to move out at the last minute. Kendra's shoulder and neck goes bouncing off of that turnbuckle. Finish her. She may have hit some of the ring post too. Fortunately, my camera always seems to be out of position. Well, the camera going to the monitor is always out of position. I can never see what anyone hits, but she hit something hard. She's going to have a headache in the morning, that's for sure. Oh, that, just really, that hurts your head, that cramps your neck up. Too. Yeah. I'm just tossing her, it's like the hair toss. It throws her over the ring. She would be going for a pin right now, in my opinion. Leg drop for good measure. Well, remember what we saw in Whiskers early in the match. She likes to wear her opponent down a lot. And I think that's what she wants to do before she cover covers for the pin. Falling head, but uh, from Whiskers Savage to Kendra. Camp uh, to Kendra. And she picks her up again. Oh, oh no, she's going for the... Yeah. Ah, uh, underhook suplex. Butterfly suplex, if you will. And we hear some growling from the champion. Indeed, playing to the crowd as she climbs up to the top rope, standing opposite the top turnbuckle. And as she goes flying... And no, Ken no! Kendra got the knees up. Kendra got the knees up at the last minute. Whiskers Savage landing chest first onto the knees of Kendra. And even though that hurts your knees, you come off far worse. I've had that happen to me many times. It is the momentum, you can't stop yourself, and you end up just crashing down into someone's patella. It's a very dangerous counterattack, that's for sure. And sometimes that can cause an injury, too. As Whisk Savage shakily gets up to her feet, she looks out on her feet. She looks a bit punch drunk right about now. Both struggling to shake out the cobwebs, it appears. Ooh! Backdoor DDT! And off the ropes with a rolling thunder! Indeed, shades of many people there. Many different shades. As Kendra goes in for the pin, we've got a one. You got a two. Three? It looks like we got us the new SLCW Women's Champion, Kendra! Woo! That's a surprise. Yep, it has been confirmed by our referee. She definitely went through a whole lot of abuse, though. So Whiskers did not make that match easy by any means.
And we've seen a change of title in the beginning, the beginning of Saturday Showdown. And the next match coming up has even more, kind of, even the, the, has connotations to future possible championships. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for the next match? Yep, I believe this is a triple threat match here. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a chamber qualifier match. It is scheduled for 20 minutes and is a triple threat match. Our referee, Dick Witham. Introducing first, weighing in at 220 pounds, fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, the anarchist R.A. Mystic. Well, coming to the ring next, hails from Houston, Texas, at a weight of 280 pounds, he is the phenomenal Jamal Travis. Quite a bit of love for the phenomenal one here. Indeed, quite a bit of love for Jamal Travis. R.A. Mystic himself isn't that bad of a wrestler. In fact, he was quite good of a wrestler when he's coming through his rookie years and into the CWF. And next, coming to the ring, their opponent weighing in at 235 pounds. He hails from Las Vegas, Nevada, the former DCWF heavyweight champion, the gambler, Ace Nightfire. Well, as a gambler, I guess he's double downing tonight.
It looks like we're about ready to go here. Just waiting word from the referee. And there's the bell. We are underway. Indeed, we are underway. And I must remind people, this is a triple threat match. And it is a qualifier for the cage at Blizzard. Elimin elimination Chamber at Blizzard, should I say. Yeah, what that pretty much means is the first fall wins. Indeed, this is one fall. It looks like Jamal Travis taking a little... Er, Ace taking a little breather as Jamal and Mystic start things off here. Well, indeed, you <clears throat> can't really be counted out for this. I mean, it will be uh, unfair on the other opponents. But, yes, Ace is probably doing something a bit smart and taking his time on the outside of the ring, letting these other two people uh, fight themselves and tie themselves Ooh, there while Ace... Drop kick there from Mystic. Indeed. I mean, it's not a fair thing to do, but it's a smart thing to do. As R.A. sends the phenomenal one off of the ropes and comes in and lays him out with a clothesline. I think somebody slapped a kick me sign on the back of the ref there. I, I don't think he's noticed. So I can't say too much. <laughs> That's what he gets for being a nerd. Yeah, oh, who am I? Nerd, <laughs> who am I? What am I talking about? I'm a massive nerd. Oh, well, I used to get signs on my back and slap some on others too. <laughs> I have. Uh... It's just like, it's like the worst form of taunting. It's like you just turn yourself into like the crappest billboard ever. Sometimes it's just fun pranks though. Oh wow, it's the phenomenal one since R.A. Mystic over the turnbuckles and onto the outside of the ring. Now let's see if Ace, let's see if Ace will get a few quick cheap shots in, and he does. Kicking R.A. when he's down, getting some shots in, and maybe hopefully trying to secure a victory by, you know, just not not exerting himself too much. Well, when they come into your yard, you got to protect it. I wouldn't say this is Ace's yard. <laughs> he's, he's more like a vulture on the savannah. Now Russian doing legs. Some work on Jamal there. Russian leg sweep from Ace onto Jamal. Now let's see where Ace takes this. Let's see if he tries to get a quick victory as he scoops up Jamal's leg. Being a gambler, I wonder if the if he knows a few other Russian games. What like hide the potato, something like that. Well, don't they have a special form of roulette? What, well, with snow and huskies? Or spin uh, the Ace... <laughs> Or spin the Ace... vodka bottle? <laughs> yeah. Ace hooks up Jamal and then brings him up and brings him back down to a stalling vertical suplex.
Jamal holding the small of his back as he lands flat down on it. And uh, Ace going for the pin, I think is a bit too close. No, he's not going for the pin. I thought he was going for the pin. I would admonish him for being too close to the rope. Oh, uh, second. He better look out. Yeah, Ari Mystic getting back into the match. I think he's saying he has a broken heart, but I'm not entirely sure. I don't think the wellness policy covers that injury. Nope, as Ace is going for the pin, hooking the leg back up. We've got a one, we got a two, and nope. No, nope, broken up by RA before it hits three. Well, that's the thing you gotta remember about these little triple threat matches is they're every man for themselves. Indeed, it is every man for you, for themselves. And now it becomes a bit of a problem because you want to stop the other person trying to break up your pin attempts as RA... Uh... Oh, just kicks Ace and sends him headfirst into the mat with a DDT. You know that used to be the most devastating maneuver in wrestling, the DDT. Oh, I remember the legendary Jake Roberts used to finish many opponents with that move. Indeed. Oh, Ari right, comes off the top. Uh, frog splash like uh, flying splash, should I say. I, I was almost a bit uncouth and said frying splash, but... <laughs> that was horrible. Uh, I almost said it though. And already right, going for the pin. We've got a one. We got a two. And the gambler kicks out before the three. It looked like he only had a deuce up his sleeve. Now Mystic holding his throat. I guess he's trying to tell the ref he was choked or something. And it, it, but protesting to the ref never really works. I mean, if the ref didn't see it, it didn't happen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you can protest all you want, but if the ref didn't see it, it didn't happen. And RA sends Ace into the corner and l lands a few knuckle shots right into the breadbasket of Ace. That's a, that's a term I miss from old school wrestling, breadbasket. Yeah, you didn't have more success protesting in St. Louis County than to a referee. Let's put it that way. Oh, that went dark really quickly. <laughs> oh, I'm not touching that one with a ten-foot pole. <laughs> well, at least do it in St. Louis County. You might win a prize. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> as the gambler, his night fires, kicks Ra back down to the ground. Might manages to pick him uh, pick him back up or not. There you go. Ace Night Fire picking R.A. back up. Irish whipping him off the ropes, almost taking out the referee in the process. And nope, stalling drop kick from R.A. He's taking the gambler off his feet. Yeah. R.A. Four eyes and can still barely see when somebody's going at him. He snap suplex from um, uh, R.A. to the gambler. As he goes to the pen, I think he's far too close to the ropes there, though. Far, far too close to the ropes. Only a two count. And the referee confirms it, a rope break. Yeah, with the referee's hair, I wonder if he's related to Velma. Oh, wow. We got a 
Suicide dive Topic and Hilo attempt from RA Mystic onto Jamal Travis on the other side. Jamal picking him out of midair and slamming with a power bomb down on the apron. That's going to take RA out of the match for some time. Well, at least he knows better than to lose focus on all your opponents. Indeed, Jamal taking the, the sensible route, taking his time, and Spears! Spears is Ace off of his feet, right into the bread basket, knocking Ace down, right almost in the middle of the canvas. Let's see if Jamal can capitalize on this. It looks like that breather is just what he needed there. Indeed. And we got another stalling suplex. No, no jackhammer suplex. It's a jackhammer suplex from Jamal. Yeah, something tells me that little poker chips are currently circling Ace's head and tweeting right now after that move. Jamal Travis invoking the spirit of hard to gay. Let's see if it was. We did. It did. That jackhammer suplex ending the match and putting Jamal Trav uh, Travis as a contender for the Elimination Chamber of Blizzard. And in the spirit of Hardoge, I have to say, jackhammer suplex. Whoo! Jackhammer is definitely one of the more painful variations of the old Brain Buster. If you excuse me, country, I have a match to prepare for for later on. So I will leave you with your next commentary partner who will be coming down shortly. Well, greetings, Maynard. I'll be your commentary partner for the rest of the show, at least, I think. I don't know. Still a little ticked off about earlier, but I can put that aside and concentrate on what we got coming up next. Next is our next, next, next. I think I, I took a bunch of mini books. Oh, well, hope you're head. doing okay after that tough match. Well, I'm tired. Oh, wait. Next is supposed to be the next elimination chamber qualifying match, but oh, I see a style queen. Edith Himmel making her way to the ring right now. And I did sing to cut the music. And now saying, what is it?
a bordello and a wrestling ring have in common? Nothing, because only an asylum and a bordello have, have a praetor inside of them. That's the most confusing riddle ever. But it amuses Heidi. Indeed it does as she laughs a little hysterically there. Now she's saying that she needed to get that joke off her chest and wants to say something directly to Nina and asks that if she's in the audience to please come down to ringside. Calling out Nina Prater, I don't think is a good thing. I do believe I am seeing her in the crowd, but <laughs> a little well, hesitant to get up. Heidi says, I want to offer an apology for the slap last week. However, before I do, I, before I do, may I expound on my little riddle for everyone here who isn't in the house. What? Oh, isn't in the know. Never mind. I think now she's got Dina's attention here. And Hideth again calling out Nina Prater. Nina says, just stop. I'll be Nina, you be Heidi. Nina says, just stop. Uh oh, Nina's got the microphone now. Okay, um, and I know you don't mean that apology, like, like any of it, but I'm just going to take it at face value and just say thank you. Uh, if this is over now, I want to go back to my seat and go back to watching the show with everyone else. And I is saying, no, 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 Nina, I want you to know how sincere I am by telling these people what I found on your personal file in the DCWF office. The one that I know they meant to shred once you, since you quit. By the way, she also read that it's a stipulation that if you ever decide to work in this business again, that there is a no compete clause. So she can't, just can't work, can't just work somewhere else for 90 days. <laughs> and now back to her riddle. riddle. Uncle Jim, how long has he, has he been in the institution now? Four years? <laughs> I mean, he said he, he was going hunting. And there he was trying to put a saddle on a goat. 
We all know goats have no sense of direction. Oh, that's just cold. That's cold even for us style queens. Yeah, you can see that was bad. <laughs> and then there's the Auntie Flo. For she was for she was a good time girl. All that frolicking and whoring. They were bound <laughs> to her bordella down eventually. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Why do we even have this info in our personnel files? <laughs> then there is your uh, sister. No, not that one. Mavis, also known as Wavy Mavis. All of the fun with the drugs and alcohol and sex party animal. Yeah, how long a sentence did she get last time? Twelve years? Oh. This just isn't right. Someone should just cut Heidi's mic. Okay, okay, um, stop. Stop, please. I don't know why you're doing this in, with everyone watching. I'm, um, I'm already out of the company, this business. And you want to bring up all of that. Why? I love my family, even the ones I'm not so proud of, okay? My uncle's been getting better, my aunt still makes the best Thanksgiving turkey, and my sisters... I don't love any one of them any less, no matter what they do. And now, we will have the failed wrestler, the Texas Barbie doll, having reached the bottom of the dung heap with the rest of her family, now has everything in common with a drunk, a prostitute, and a convict. Well, I still don't see anything in common. One more riddle for you, Nina. What does a drunk, a prostitute, and a convict, and you all have in common? Everyone will agree to this. You aren't and never will be a model like me. Uh, I'm not quite sure anyone really wants to be a model like Heidi. Well, you don't have to be a model to be a great wrestler. Oh, now what's Heidi up to? So she's trying to climb on the chairs. Did she just reach out and slap Nina? Oh my god! Adding insult to injury, or injury to Wouldn't insult. that be the second time she's done that? Oh. That was just cruel. Cruel and it, unusual. Very unusual. I bet if we looked in uh, Heidi's file, we could probably find some unsavory things, but... We won't sink to Heidi's Probably Heidi, more so. issues than Mad Magazine. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and carry on. Our next match is another qualifying match for the Blizzard Elimination Chamber. Shall I go ahead and bring out our opponents? Yep, oh, our first. Someone should give Nina a tissue. This is really sad. I'm sorry, well, our first competitor comes out comes from the house next door at a weight of 205 pounds. He is 
the neighborhood watch wolf wind shadow Is this guy legal to be around kids? Well, that's why we don't let kids wrestle here. Crow kind of quiet for the neighborhood watch here. Well, Wolf is one of our old time wrestlers, old time. <laughs> he is one about the old guard. He is making his return here at the DCWF after a bit of a break here. So, uh, might just take the crowd a match or two to get reacquainted with him, but trust me, it's worth it. I didn't sound bad at it. And next, next yep. out, hailing from Natal. Oh, no, next out, hailing from, uh, hailing from, from San Diego, Diego California, weighing in at 295 pounds. It is Mr. SFL Wade Bond. A huge ovation for Mr. SFL, as always. And finally, hailing from Naples, Italy, weighing in at 215 pounds, he is the mafioso, William Naples. wrestlers in this match, that's for sure. Yeah, William Nichols is very fast, uh, very agile. He is one of the newest of the, the flippy shit genre or department of wrestling, whereas Mr. SFL very methodical, he very, very uh, big, and very, <laughs> yeah, he takes his time and plots out his moves. And Wolf Windshadow here is, so again, since this, I think, is only his second match since his return, is a complete wild card. 
what he's gonna do, we, I have no idea. It looks like we're just about underway once we get word from the referee. And there we are! Uh, it looks like William has his sight set on Mr. SFL. You're kind of looking like David and Goliath in the middle of the ring there. Collar, elbow, tie up, and Wolf is looking on, I think, gauging his opponents here. Ooh, a match is sho massive shove from Mr. SFL knocking William down, but William is right back up again. Didn't even face him. Mr. SFL showing who the bigger of the two opponents is. Ooh, and a series of quick punches. Kicks taking Mr. SFL off of his feet. That's the quickness I was talking about with Merrick. And here he goes for an early pin attempt. And Wolf not having any part of this. He died. Yeah, breaking, breaking that pin up. Well, you can't be very happy about that. Ooh, big right fist, and another from Wolf. Should watch that close fist. Does anyone ever well, want any? I think close fist close is legal fist. in this match, considering that it's only to the first fall. And we're going to Merrick or uh, William Nichols coming off the ropes, and oh, right into a clothesline. Mr. So fell back up to his feet, turning his attention to Wolf. As Wolf, I would, I would move away from the big man. Maybe go try and get a pin on William. William is like, really? I think Dick should check on William. It looks like he really got his, his yeah. His, well, the uh, neighborhood watch is wise. He should be watching out for Mr. SFL there. I mean, that's the key to winning a triple threat match, is don't lose focus on either opponent. Well, I got a punch and a kick from Mr. SFL. Got Wolf doubled over in pain. I'm so worried about Mr. Ma Mafioso, though. I mean, just look at him. Literally hurt his throat. Oh, and here comes Mr. SFL with a massive vertical suplex up and over. Catching a lot of air with that one. Sending Wolf down to his back. Mr. SFL. It, you know, that's got to hurt. Well, Mr. SFL is the only man on his feet at the moment. I know William looks like he's really down for the count. Literally. Maybe Mr. SFL should go for a quick pin on him, but you know. I'm not the one calling the shots. I'm just uh, just calling the shots as they happen. Into the oh, a rebound go with Wolf there, and a drop kick taking Mr. SFL down. Looks like William Naples finally back up to his feet, though he still looks a little wobbly. But Wolf focusing his attention on Mr. SFL. Massive. Yeah, good leg drop there. Yeah, I said massive. Yeah, that's easy to do. <laughs> and here goes Wolf for that quick pin. Oh, and Mr. S or Mr. Mafioso coming out of nowhere, breaking that pin up. Well, these guys have to pay attention to the last match where they got R.A. Mystic out and down for the count. Well, not really down for the count, but just out of the match totally. So it was. Remember, just divide the... and conquer. Exactly. Exactly. Couldn't have said it better myself. Really couldn't have. <laughs> Oh, 
Off the ropes he goes. And a behind drop kick. Sending. Sending goes down to the mat. Yep, it's looking like advantage mafioso now. Well, again, Mr. Mafioso is one of our, our rising stars here. He's made quite an impression. And here we go. Mafioso driving Mr. SFL up to his feet. Oh, Wade countering with a big punch. Wolf back up to his feet. And Mr. Mafioso looks a little dazed. And yeah, I think Mr. SFL to... made his brain fumble a little bit. <laughs> Well, but he's not going down, though. That's three punches to the head, and he is still on his feet. Mr. SFL looks clearly confused. He better, he better keep an eye out, though. Wolf is back to his feet, too. Oh, now William coming back with a punch of his own. And again, William, or Wolf, pardon me, Wolf just watching the action. Here, waiting for an opportunity. And here comes Mr. Mas Mafioso off the ropes. And a massive drop kick. And Mr. Esso fell down to the mat. What does Mr. Mafioso have in mind for Mr. SFL? to see here. Oh, he took a little too long. Mr. There. SFL fighting back. And here comes this, yeah, Mr. SFL punching his way out of that hold. Looks like we're on the next down here. <laughs> oh, and he ran right into that big boot. If Does he still clean his boots? They're hate for mache. They're just for show. I was gonna say. I mean, having a football background, you never know when there might be cleats under there. Mr. Mafioso is down. Mr. SFL standing over him. What does he have planned? And when will Wolf make a move? Right now, if I was Wolf, I would just take Mr. SFL down with a chop block. And pin them both. That's what I'd do. Well, you gotta be careful, chap, blocking a football player. That's a 10 yard penalty. I don't think it works that way in wrestling. We don't really add penalties unless you get counted out. That's about it. Well, Mr. SFL. Or, pardon me, Mr. Mafioso. Too many misters in the ring. Mr. W Wolf Windshadow delivering some... Mr. Neighborhood Watch. Right. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Neighborhood Watch delivering lefts and rights here to Mr. SFL. Wade, though, just shrugging him off. Being the... Oh, he just... He is huge compared to the other guys. Coming back with a big right hand of his own. And a left. Oh, the two just exchanging kicks and... Punches. Where's Mr. Mafioso gone now? Ah, there he is. Yeah, and next we'll probably have those guys from, you know, oh. Mr. Men, you know, like Mr. Silly, Mr. Happy. Oh, my Lord. And Wolf Winchado taking Mr. SFL down with a code breaker. This could be it, folks. There he goes to the pen. He looks awfully close to the ropes, though. And Merrick breaking the pin up. 
with a ground stump anyway, so, but if he hadn't, it, it would have been ropes. <laughs> Mr. SFL, though, getting up a little wobbly after that. I definitely know that feeling. Yeah, he looks a little blitzed there. Ooh, a big kick from Mr. SFL. That has got to take the wind out of you. Take the wind out of the wind shadow. No, it's just a shadow. Ooh, and a huge sidewalk slam from Mr. SFL. Sending Wolf. Oh! And Merrick coming into the sunset clip. Here's the oh, cover one! got the upset. Oh, she, a 2.97. Well, I'll just round that up to 2.9. Somebody needs to take the ref's calculator away. Oh, Mr. Mafioso dragging Mr. SFL back up to his feet and delivering some kicks to the legs. That's what you do with these big guys. You gotta, you gotta t take out the, the, the you, chop, you gotta chop down the tree is what you gotta do. <laughs> A kick from Mr. Mafia, or Mr. SFL though has Mr. Mafia, so holding his gut. Ooh, and another kick. That's gotta be hard to breathe after kicks from that big guy. Ooh, and a massive haymaker. One of my favorite moves. I like just smacking a person right in the nose and sending them down to the ground. Indeed, a show of fisticuffs, too. Oh, Mr. Mafioso, though, taking Mr. SFL back down to the mat. And coming off the ropes, a um, shining wizard. Oh, my God, a decent dropkick. He was just taking it. Wolf, and it's just like goes. I was talking about before, the biting and conquering. One, two. Oh, and Wolf kicks out. How did he do that? I was sure Mr. Mafioso had it that had that. I mean, Mr. SFL looks down. Well, I won't say down for the count because no one's counting on him. But well, you did mention before that he's kind of a wild card. You know, there's no telling right. how much he still has it in him. I think they're all wild cards at this point. Ooh! And a fisherman suplex from the wolf sending Merrick back down to the map. And Mr. Mafioso looks like he is in pain, holding his back. He's actually looked like he's been in pain quite a bit of this match. I don't know, I wonder if he's been you know, overextending himself lately with all this uh, high-flying flippy shit stuff. Mr. Oh, man, you can laugh that you said extend. <laughs> oh, I said extend, not extends. And Mr. SFL and Wolf Winshout are here facing off in the middle Close to the middle of the ring, Merrick or William Naples still holding his back in pain. Ooh, and a massive chop block taking Wolf Windshadow down. Wolf's holding his leg. Mr. West FL, they have done some damage there. Indeed, they have. Wolf is back up to his feet, though. Oh, hulking up. Uh oh. <laughs> this it looks like this he, might not be good. Sometimes pain just motivates people. And Wolf Winchell seems like the kind of guy who gets motivated by pain. Well, Mr. I mean, just looking at this guy. <laughs> 
I know. He's kind of scary looking with the long hair and the tattoos. I say scary, I meant sexy. But Merrick or William Naples coming off the whoa. What the hell? Coming off the ropes. Triple threat match right there. Is take advantage of two wrestlers in the ring. Yeah, use one use one wrestler as a weapon against the other. You know, Miss, Miss, if I was Mr. SFL, I would just grab Wolf by the hair and swing him around into Merrick and take them both down and then just pin them both. I want to see two guys get pinned at once. Is that kinky? I have seen it before, just not too frequently. Well, Mr. SFL telling Wolf to bring it, and Wolf is bringing it. There's a series of punches now coming off the ropes. And another clothesline, a big one like what took Merrick out for. Probably five whole minutes there holding his neck. Merrick is still on the ground holding his back. Again, this would be a good time. Ooh, fist drop from Wolf. It would be a good time for Wolf to capitalize and, and pin Mr. SFL. But it looks like he wants to dish out a little more damage first. He better not lose focus on his other opponent while he does this. Ooh, he attempts to pick up Mr. SFL, but... Wade come, comes back with a kick to the gut, knocking the wind out of the wind shadow again. Oh! Oh! And a devastating backbreaker. I hope he's got a chiropractor on speed dial after that. And Wade's not done with him. I'd have gone for the pin right then and there, especially with Mr. Mafioso still looking pretty much not in it. <laughs> but here goes Wade with an Irish whip. Almost, looks like he almost whipped Wolf into the referee. Wolf here tangled up in the ropes. What is Mr. S Mr. Mafioso doing? He's gone on. He's gone to the outside here. He's on the apron. I think he's trying to climb. He's trying to walk on the ropes. Oh my gosh! We, I don't think we've ever seen that at the DCW. Have someone standing. That's not safe ropes. to do when somebody's caught in it. You can very easily lose your footing. Well, especially with Mr. SFL right there. Ooh, and William Naples stomping on Wolf. Mr. SFL taking Wolf up into a superplex. Merrick caught it in and almost... He just double superplexed him. <laughs> Took both of them down. Incredible feat of strength by Mr. SFL. But was it too? Was it too much? It looks like Mr. SFL may have uh, used up what gas he had left in the engine there. I don't want to know about Mr. SFL's gas. <laughs> and whoa! And there it is. There's a three count. count. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by pinfall and the next uh, person for the Elimination Chamber, uh, it, uh, Blizzard, Mr. SFL Wade Bonds.
Well, that was one hell of a match. Now, what is that? Wait, what is this? Ravishing Rock Reynolds coming down to the... Uh, just stomping the hell out of William Naples? These two have had a history. They were... They were part of supremacy. I think supremacy is dead, though. As Oh! Miss Mafioso, if you remember uh, last Saturday, interrupted Rock's uh, promo with a kick to the head, and Rock now coming out and delivering some de delivering some revenge. Oh, and he spits on Merrick. I thought we had a rule against spitting here. Merrick William Nichols. Sorry, he looks a lot like a guy I know named uh, uh, Merrick. So I get confused. Wow. I didn't see that coming. Rock him out and dishing out a little revenge. So that's two qualifiers now for the Blizzard chamber elimination chamber match we have who was the first one i wasn't commentating <laughs> you don't remember oh my god really well and also and now wait <laughs> mr sfl anyway all right uh are you still with me maynard Oh, but KB. Jamal was like, that's right, Jamal Travis. The phenomenal Jamal Travis was our first qualifier for the eliminate men's elimination chamber. I will qualify that. And now, Mr. SFL Wade Bonds. And let's go ahead and go on to match number four. Match number four. We have got the Gypsy versus. The model. So I will go ahead and bring out the contestants first, hailing from wherever she pleases, weighing in at 125 pounds, at a standing at a height of five foot six. She is Gypsy Tough Andrea Dalka. And her opponent, hailing from London, England, weighing in at 115 pounds, she is your reigning DCWF Women's Champion, the model Heidi Himmel. She's also a meaning to be here. Yeah, I do believe this match is not entitled, if I remember right. That is right, the women's title is not on the line. Yeah. 
And of course, Heidith Himmel, accompanied to the ring by Lady Tara. Of course. I think it's good to point out that Nina Prater is still ringside, and I'm sure she's taken well into account those words exchanged to her earlier, as well as that slap. Uh, it looks like Lady Tara is trying to get into Andrea's head there with her put-downs, her slander of Andrea. The two ladies meet up in the middle of the ring, though. Collar elbow tie up and Heidi immediately shoving Andrew off of her. <laughs> Andrew is shoving back though, so pushy pushy match. Now they lock horns here. Ooh. And a knee to the midsection. That's gotta hurt. Right to the bread basket. Lady Tara saying, get her part, get her partner. Yeah, Andrea turning around into a pin though. Only a two count, but Andrea could have ended it right then and there. I think she forgot to say dozy dove afterwards. <laughs> now Andrea powering out of that headlock. Off the ropes goes Andrea Dalka. And she ducks the clothesline. And the champ might want to look behind her here. Ooh, and a slap. Well, <laughs> I can't say she didn't deserve it after earlier tonight. <laughs> and again, Andrea ducking a clothesline. Ooh, and a back rake. Me, yeah. Claws coming out. And she goes for a schoolboy roll up. Only a two count, though. Let's see, 2.12. We just round that out to 2.1. That's something you gotta remember about gypsies, is they are full of tricks, and Andrea Dalka is sure showing that so far. Well, Lady Tara is just, uh, I think she's just being flat out racist out there, trying to get into Andrea's head, I'm sure, but still, that's just low. Eh. Shades of one of the greatest managers of all time, Bobby the Brain Heenan, if you ask me. Well, Heidi, looks like she is still... Oh, she's... There are no timeouts in wrestling. You're not even in the match. You can't... You can't call a timeout. Heidi, though, back up your feet... Wrestlers can't even call timeouts, let alone coaches. <laughs> yeah. well, Heidi using the ropes to get back up to her feet. It looks like she's still. Oh, they're trying to. Dick is trying to get her away from the ropes to stop using them as a crutch, literally. 
dicks up to a four. Five. And Heidi finally off the ropes. I didn't know you could get counted out for sitting on the ropes. I didn't know either, but, uh, you know, I can't think of anything better to happen to a style queen right, right about now, anyway. Right, yeah, norm the oh. Normally, you only get penalized for stalling in freestyle wrestling. Well, Heidi. Heidi performing a sunset flip, though, only able to get a two count off of uh, Andrea, what do we got? A 2.43 or just round that to 2.4? Ooh. Heidi again laying in those knees to Andrea. Maybe if we swap her calculator out with the. or his calculator out, sorry, the hair. No. <laughs> what? With an abacus, we won't get so many decimals. Dick is a pretty girl. He's a pretty girl. Well, Andrea in the corner here, and Heidi trying to get the ref's attention. Yeah, with that there, I'm still waiting for the ref to shout jinkies. And, of course, the ref... Doing what refs do best, turning their back on the action to, uh, to check out the person who's interrupting them. And the champion calling the ref a puppet. Oh, uh, that's British slang for uh, like a, a dummy because they don't care for the Muppets over there. And Tara taking advantage of the distraction too. The leg, Andrea out there in the corner, now Heidi laying in the boots on a foot choke. I don't know, I've always liked Fozzie Gonzo an animal. <laughs> you kind of sound like a combination of all three. Wacka, wacka, wacka. Dick admonishing Heidi for the chokes. Heidi getting all up in Dick's face. So again, Heidi, as far as I can tell, Heidi, I mean, the ref doesn't see what's going on in the corner Tara. here. And now, Tara laying in the foot shows. It looks like Velma, I mean, the referee needs to get a clue here. I don't even know what's so interesting about Heidi. The dick keeps getting uh, distracted. Tara's wearing a lot less clothes. And now Heidi dragging I mean, it's not all, into the it's middle. It's not hard to distract this referee. All you gotta do is flash a computer screen. You think Heidi has one of those in her bra? That might be a, considered a weapon. And here goes Heidi for the cover. I have an she iPhone. One, two. No, that's Rock's gig. He'd probably sue for copyright infringement. And only a 2.47. That rounds up to 2.5. So close. Two and a half. Andrew, though, able to kick out. Despite all this. Despite all the cheating. Despite all the dirty tactics. Andrew is still able to kick out Heidi. Uh, Heidi's got to really pull something nasty out of her bag of tricks here, I think. Unfortunately. Ooh, oh, an arm drag. Arm bar takedown there. And she is digging that knee into Andrea's back. You can see the pain on Andrea's face clear from over here. Andrea Dalton not quite squealing yet.
Lady Tar calling Andrea a whore. That's a hawk calling the kettle black. Indeed it is. But Andrea again able to power out of this tape of the arm bar and, and most gypsies Heidi... will put a curse on you if you call them that. <laughs> Heidi going immediately into a wrist lock. And Andrew turning it around. Ooh, a and a nice chop! And a leg sweep, taking the feet out from under Heidi. Off the rope she goes! And, ooh, yeah. the gyp- I know this move well, the gypsy leg drop right on Heidi's head. Here she goes for the pin. Uh, now Lady Tara up on the- Oh, this sucks. Tara up on the apron, distracting the ref. He does not see the pin. That could have been a win for Andrea. Oh, that's why, because she's been flash she's flashing the referee. I think oh. he's going to be stiff for a while after that one. <laughs> I'm not sure Dick has reached puberty yet. I don't know if he gets stiff, but anyway... Yeah, he might need a step layer with how short he is. <laughs> well, now Andrew is distracted, telling Hi or Tara to get off the apron, leaving Heidi completely unsupervised. And an unsupervised style queen is a dangerous style queen. And now he's saying that his mom doesn't allow him to socialize with ladies like her. Mean horse. Oh, and Heidi sneaking up behind Andrea. Got her in a small package pin. One, two. Only a deuce. And here comes that large decimal again. Uh, 2.43 rounds up to 2.4. Dick has to learn he only has to go out to the second decimal. He can round up. That's what real mathematicians do. But now Heidi back up to her feet. Andrew looking a little worse for the wear. And Tara, oh, just got off the apron good. Now Heidi going over, is she conferring with Lady Tara while Andrea is down? It looks like, it looks like she is. The I old ringside like huddle. I don't like that. Uh-oh. Huh? Tara's grinning, what's going on here? Yeah, I never trust a grinning style queen either. Ooh, and a drop oh. double, sending, sending the model down on her face, she's whole. She looks, she reminds me of Marsha Brady there when she got the football to the face. Oh, my nose! Oh, my nose! We have to buy Heidi another nose. Oh, now Andrew moving in for the camel clutch. Well, you should know how many of them we had to buy for you, Tara. Yep. First a face plant, and now stretching that back. Yeah, Andrea has that camel clutch. Has that camel clutch locked in tight. Oh, Tara uh, back up on the apron, though. The rack has left. Stop it. Pay attention. Heidi is tapping oh. out. The ref better pay Rinder. attention. Oh, my lord. Either that or exercise is power to eject. And uh, Andrea just, Andrea lets go of the hold. I think she is, she is furious with the ref. She's got to be. I know I would be.
Belka saying that's it and she slides out of the ring uh oh she's digging around under the apron that's where we keep all the good toys yep, that's the gateway to parts unknown right there and it looks like she's got a tambourine there a tambourine oh no It looks like she she's about to be playing some music in there, she, and she sure oh, did. But the referee oh, sees it. We got a disqualification. Oh. The first illegal thing the referee sees after Andre had what a valid tap out and a valid probably a valid pinfall. The ref doesn't see either of those. Oh. But here's your winner by disqualification, the model Heidi Himmel. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Is wondering what what happened. I'm sure she's still hearing the tambourine in her head. Looks like we got one match left here, and that's our main event. And I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in magic. I believe I can fly. <laughs> well, in a quick recap of today's show, in our first match, uh, let's not think about our first match too much. But uh, the SLCW Women's Champion, Whisker Savage, uh, lost the belt to Kendra, Kendra, Kendra the Showgirl. In our second match, Jamal. Hey, Davis, it was a tough match. The, phenom <laughs> the phenomenal one. The phenomenal one is our first qualifier for the Elimination Chamber at Blizzard, which will be coming up in about a month. Mark your calendars for about a month. And then Heidi Himmel came out and made Nina cry for no damn good reason, except that she's a meanie poopy head. Then our third match, Wade Bonds was our second qualifier for the men's Blizzard elimination match. And we just saw a terrible travesty of justice as Heidi Himmel wins against Andrea Dalka by DQ because all of her cheating isn't noticed but Andrea gets mad and boom she's out of there DQ that is, and here we go I believe we were going to be joined at the commentary table by a special guest we all know this music we've been listening to it since 2008 and we love it you know what it means you know what it means. This is the year that hope fails you. <laughs> that the test subjects run the asylum. Experiment, whatever. <laughs> That's right. The hardcore dragon himself, Mad Mike.
There's a seat. Just sit down. Just sit down in the middle. The, the middle. I think that's the first time I've ever seen the tree get some exercise there. <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> well, more than tap, tap, point, click. And our first competitor tonight, hailing from Elm Street, weighing in at 218 pounds, is standing at the height of six foot one. He is Jack O Lantern. He is your SLCW men's champion. I wonder how long he can hold on to that belt, though, considering that Halloween's about a month over now. He's not just powered by the magic of Halloween. He is Jack O'Lantern. And his opponent tonight, hailing from Swansea, Wales, weighing in at 195 pounds, he is your DCWF men's heavyweight champion, the Celtic Dragon, Mithil Wysak. Oh, Mad Mike, sure. hold, on. hold on a second, Mad Mike. Welcome to the commentary, and I'm sure Thank you have you. some comments to make. I know there's still some oh. bad blood between you and Mythol. Would you care to expound on? Well, yes, I do. First off, I wanted to talk to my commentary partner to my left here. You said something about me not getting exercise. Yeah, you're the one to fucking talk with with popcorn right next to you, with a very That's chubby a body type. Oh, I see. Sorry, you, you just look husky to me. Anyway, let's go on this match. Uh, what? Who do you think is going to actually win this match tonight? If you can call well, this one. Sorry. It's very hard to say. Mythol is a former champion in his own right. Mythol is the champion. This is a champion versus champion match. Yes, that um, Mythol is the DCWF World Heavyweight Champion. The, uh, he uh, holds the belt that I want. Heck, no, it's the one I deserve more than anything. And Jack is the, uh, is it SLCW champion or is it, uh, yes. international? Yes, because I remember before it was called international. Now, Jack is the larger of the two, but these two look very evenly matched. Well, I've, I've tagged with Mythil before and... One thing you gotta know, he's not the biggest lad in the world, if, if anything he's fairly weak, but he does flippy shit like this, as you usually to get the upper hand. Well, you can never underestimate the smaller guys, that's for sure. Uh, that's, that's, that's for sure, but to be honest, all you need to do is give him a nice smack in the face, and they'll probably go down very fairly quickly. Well, that's if you're able to connect with the slap, because sometimes they can be very agile and dodge that. Yeah, well, well, what Jet needs to do is ground him. He needs to take him down, 
needs to slam to the to the floor and hit him in the face constantly, or just wrench in the submission, take out his legs. I I say go for ankle locks and shit. Well, you're talking about grounding. What about taking away his TV? <laughs> his TV. <sighs> He's trying to fight dumbasses, and now he's going for a pin. One, two, and only a two count. It's fairly, that was fairly precise. Did he have like a fucking stopwatch on him or something? Yeah, anyway, that's one of those wrist calculators. Like a I fucking neck like beard. I was thinking he was like Rain Man. Probably a neck beard like the fans out here tonight. Anyway, let's get on with the match, shall we? Oh shush, you are neck beards. Oh, Jack, Irish whipping Mithil into the corner. And BAM! Knees to the gut. Go on. Hit him in the solar plexus. Make him bleed. Pop his spleen. That's right. Aim for the liver. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Go on. Out. Don't let, don't let me stop you lot from talking, even though I'm a loudmouth, I will allow you lot to talk, and Mythal, as you said, got a way to move out with a split-legged moonsault, and oh, netbreaker. Well, he's showing why he carries a belt, at least, without his fighting back. And only a two counts. Thank God, only a two count. And a 2.4 slash pi count, whatever the fuck he's got. Now, Mythal dragging Jack, Jack in the middle of the ring. He's grabbing his hair, ref. Go on. Count, count him out. He's grabbing his bloody hair. Now he's going I'm for a chin lock. I'm if he has a great dame back in the mystery machine in the parking lot. <laughs> Who? Mythal or Jack? I gotta say, you 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 listen, you watch too much Cartoon Network to be a full grown man. And anyway, Mythal. Oh, oh, like, hey, like Velma. oh, that dude, the ref. No, he just looks like a puffer to me. Now Mythal giving the stumps to Jack's face, trying to not let him breathe in this match. He's going for a pin. One, two, and only a two count. Well, stamina is always very key in any match you get into, that's for sure. Well, well yeah, you don't want to be gas in the middle of the ring. Then you're just easy pickings. And now, Mythil pick, picking up Jack. And Jack just shoving away, get, saying, get, the ha get your hands off me, bitch. And now knee him to the gut. And saying working over that body, he already did quite a lot. Not even wrestlers have gas either. <laughs> no, um, and you also want to be serious about this match. And oh, Mythal kicking into the gut. Oh, Will Barrow. Oh, Will Barrow. Oh, backbreaker. Now he is working that body right now. He's he's been doing it in the corner. He's been do doing anything to just wreck that either the ribs the back the solar plex anything I want uh, hopefully he's gonna make him spit blood and now oh side slam I I have now seen his center of focus the midsection here well definitely as I said before he's trying to Give him some sort of internal bleeding and probably just set up with this abdominal stretch. Now, Mythal has taken a lot of damage to the torso. It could be a 
more, more than just impossible possibility to make him tap out to just a simple move like a downhill stretch and oh Jack does not want him to submit he just goes to a German suplex I think he'd rather get the pin rather than make it make Mythel submit here there just wear down his midsection and upper body a little more oh he's going for the pin one two and only a two count And 2.4 slash pi minus the infinity or whatever the hell he's saying. Don't know how he can say that much in one breath. I'm surprised none of his counts have wound up as E equals MC square. <laughs> mm. Well, he's the rain man of wrath. After this, he's going to go watch Judge Wapner. We've had to videotape it for him, though, because... Judge Wapner's probably like dead or something by now, but still, Judge Wapner. Oh! I thought you were the Doctor Who type. And, well, while you two was bickering, Jack Lan went for a pin and two, only a two count. What happened is Mythyl sprang board off the ropes into a shooting star press, but Jack caught him midair and slammed him down with a power bomb. A power bomb from hell. Yeah, Jack's showing that he doesn't get fooled too easily, that's for sure. Well, this is definitely now, a match of strength against agility, as Jack does have Mythyl up in a bear hug now, just trying to squeeze the breath out of him, and maybe break a rib or two, or ten. I think, I think he's already broken a rib or two. He can pop a kidney if those arms are low enough. And, yet again, doesn't want to go for the submission, and goes for the vertical suplex. I do not think he wants a submission in this match. He's just trying to hurt Methyl, and I love it. Yeah, now Methyl looking oh. like a tender as a cube stake right now. Oh, Methyl super kick, kick, and oh, that's good. A spine buster. Yeah, that super kick did not face Jack O' Lantern one bit. Any time Mythyl's trying to do any offense, Jack is just slamming him down, and I love it. And now he's lifting up for the Gorilla Press, and... Oh! Mythyl, uh, as Jack O'Lan was dropping him, Mythyl catches him between his legs with a head scissors takedown. Now he's shooting off the ropes, and oh! Standing shooting star press. This is the flippy shit I talked about. Yep, a great show of agility from Mythyl here. And off the ropes he goes. Well, I think Jack is going about it the wrong way by going for internal organs. If that is indeed his M.O., he should be going for the legs because you can't flip and you can't kick if you can't stand up. Well, Mythyl indeed, just did a like the great legends once said, a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest never wins. Well, Mythyl returned with all all the abuse Jack's given him is is all the abuse back, and within 30 seconds he did all sorts of flippy shit: shooting star presses, moon souls off the ropes, and a split second moon uh, split legged moon soul off the ropes. Now, Mythyl is convinced, and oh, one, two. Ah, uh, Jack went for the roll-up. Mythyl was surprised he didn't get the three count before, and Mythyl needs to have his wits about him, but... It, oh! Oh, Shining Wizard of the face. And a kamikaze oh. crash, sending both men down to the mat. Yeah, Mythyl is not afraid to sacrifice himself for the match, that's for sure. Yeah, I wouldn't say that's a good idea with all the abuse he's been taking. He doesn't want to do many bumps on his back or bumps on his stomach, and that's exactly what he's doing, like an idiot, and that's why I think he shouldn't have the title and should be around my waist. Well, it depends on his accuracy here. Even if he does hit, he's still putting more strain on his gut, which must be bruised by now, or at least internal bleeding. And on Mythyl, squaring up Jack, I'm wondering what he's going to do. He has a he whole looks, lot of he shit. Looks like he looks like he can pray. 
Oh! Now Myth will try to do, do a shooting star press out of nowhere, and Jack can't catch him as he fell down into a choke slam. A I think that might be ninety nine missile there. Oh, wait, what's going on? How come Mike's getting up? Ooh, Jack o' Do we want to know? A double lock DDT. I've never even seen that move before. Except, but I know the name somehow. And. Mythyl down. Mike. Mike. Oh, my God. He just gave a. He goes. just attacked Jack. Jack o' What the hell? What the. What the hell? He just cost. Kept talking about uh, wanting to hurt just, Mithil, now he's going on after Jack here. Well, wait, but, well, okay, uh, no. I well, mean, that gives I Jack mean, the no. win by disqualification, that's probably why. But he's, but he's beating up on the wrong guy. If he wants to weaken Mithil so he can take the belt off, that doesn't make any sense. Mike is mad. Mike is mad, and by mad... I do mean insane. What the hell is that? And what's in that bottle? Oh, there? here we go. Oh, that's vodka. Yeah, that's my like fire oh. spitting here. I don't understand, Mike. I really don't. Well, you know what they say, candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker. Now that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If he did not want Mythyl, if he doesn't think Mythyl deserves the belt, why did he give Mythyl the... And now Mythyl's got a fire oh, wait, extinguisher. No, oh, I'm so confused. I'm just confused. I think we... No man, Mike's weakness here. Afraid of the fire extinguisher. Oh! Ah, and he's just pummeling Mike with that extinguisher. He's <laughs> putting the fire out. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Now he is spraying Mike with the CO2 from the extinguisher. That is suffocating. Mike's already under a mask, and now he's covering it with carbon dioxide foam. I think he's trying to kill Mad Mike. Kill the, kill the dragon. Dragon on dragon. Kill him. He looks like a dragon exterminator there. <laughs> Does he work for Orkin? <laughs> Do you have dragons in your basement? Call Orkin. Yeah, he just ran him off like a cockroach. Well, I always had respect for Mike, but after this, I mean, even after war games, I had respect for Mike, but after this, I just don't even know anymore. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up another edition of Showdown. If you would like to join the fan club, so you can keep up on all of our activities. <laughs> on all of our activities, including road shows, exhibition matches, charity shows, whatever else we might be up to. Say, hey, give me a fan tag, and someone here will help you get one. And also, if you like what you saw and would like to help support the DCWF, 
because we do have bills to pay. There is a red donation box behind the commentary table here, affectionately known as that ass. So tap that ass if you got a linden or two or ten or however many you can spare. And our next show is Wednesday, Wednesday Warzone at 3 p.m. SLT. You'll see rookies, you'll see pros. We are combining the show with Warzone. So this show is where you will see the up and comers and you will see the stars clashing in the ring. You won't want to miss it. 3 p.m. SLT Wednesday. Again, thank you for coming out. And, of course, in about a month, we have Blizzard. So be watching here all month long as men and women are, are, ah, uh, sign up for go-kart races too, whatever, are qualifying for their respective Elimination Chamber matches. On behalf of our official tonight, Dick Witham, and my commentating partner, Maynard Shamuz, and our other commentators out here tonight, including Pietro Shelford, I think I heard him, Mythil Wysak, and uh, Mad Mike Freeman Strath. This is Whiskers Savage wishing you a good rest of your day and keep me home safely. And now I'm wanting to go dance to La Cougar right after that. <laughs> This video was filmed on location by Zarakan Productions. Zarakan Productions is an umbrella group for many YouTube shows and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to zarakan.com for a complete listing of shows and businesses associated with Zarakan Productions and their own media links. Zarakan Productions shows have been organized alphabetically in playlists in a year, month, Day format for easier video navigation. Multiple part videos have been named accordingly starting with part 1, and the last video of a multiple part video series will have end as a part of its title. Please like, comment, and share this video as it helps both Zarakan Productions, and the creators of this video's content. Also, be sure to check the playlists for past episodes of show content, and subscribe to this channel for future videos. Thank you for watching, and happy wandering.